This season three midseason update is going to drastically change Rebirth moving forward. So today we are covering everything that you need to know. We're going to be going over the patch notes, talking about the massive changes that you need to be aware of, as well as, of course, covering the weapon balancing. The meta is once again shifting, so we're going to be covering what exactly was nerfed and buffed. Now, to start off here, first thing is the playlist. We have Rebirth, Solos, Duos, Trios, and Quads for about the next month or so. And then June 20th to 22nd, we have this special game mode that we don't totally know about just yet. But mo most importantly, we have Solos through Quads for the next month. Now, in terms of kind of big changes that are coming, first things first, we have a brand new perk in the perk one slot. Perk one is going to be your EOD, your double time, your quick fix. We have a new perk called Serpentine, which reduces the amount of damage that you take while sprinting, reduces the amount of damage from bullets, fire, explosives while you are actually sprinting by 20%. So going to be an interesting dynamic moving forward. I'm not totally sure whether I'm going to be running quick fix or Serpentine just yet. Really have to play around with both and see which one I like. Of course, if you've been here before, you know that I love quick fix because of you know solo doing trailing and quadding but serpentine could replace that we have to see next we have new lootable perks on rebirth yes you can actually loot these perks right here serpentine tune up tracker hardline kill chain and eod big ones we're looking for probably are going to be serpentine of course tracker could be beneficial and eod especially because people are running explosives other thing to keep in mind is you know you can pick up serpentine or eod so maybe quick fix is the way to go it remains to be seen but know that you can now loot perks perks on rebirth the other thing that we have is a new field upgrade called the radar jammer this jams your enemy's radar within about 125 meters it's a radius of 125 meters for 45 seconds that is a very long time where do i see this being applied the most probably right after a fire sale throw that thing down jam the radar make sure that nobody can actually see where you are the other thing is it can be attached to vehicles so throw that radar jammer on drive around figure out where you're going and just note that a lot of these changes apply to both caldera and rebirth so they may not be as applicable for rebirth last thing is you're going to see a ton of videos about this probably on tiktok youtube whatever it may be new lootable loadout drop markers yes only for caldera this is not on rebirth so just be aware that if you see a video it doesn't actually apply to rebirth next up we go down to a brand new public event that you have to be aware of and real quick for all things rebirth news you know changes to stay up to date about current metas and of course if you are looking to get better at rebirth just consider hitting that subscribe button down below i do videos every single day i live stream on youtube four days a week so if you want to know when i'm posting and going live make sure you turn on that notification bell now we have the new occupation scan public event in rebirth essentially what this is is you will get a warning that this operation scan is going out if you are not prone which means if you are standing sprinting if you're crouched then you are going to appear on the mini map how is this going to affect everything i honestly have no idea we'll see how long it lasts for in terms of you staying on the mini map my initial inclination from this is i'm not going to be going prone for this i'm going to keep moving and you know what you just have to be aware that you're going to briefly be on the mini map next up we go down here you're going to see increased downed movement speed is this a major issue in rebirth absolutely not this is a big change for caldera because of how out in the open it is but we of course all run into situations where you go down and you're just barely not able to get behind cover well now you have a little bit of increased down movement speed allowing you to get behind that cover other thing that we want to be aware of stim adjustments i'm not totally sure if this happened just yet it says in season so not totally sure if this is applicable right now but it, the slide modifier has been reduced this means you don't slide as fast or as far as you used to they brought that back a little bit you still have the advantage of using stims where you know you can use that speed boost but it's not going to be as much the other thing is once you are actually getting shot there was a little bit of a bug where you would just keep stimming and you know your health would just keep regening it seems like they actually took that out so next we're going to scroll down to decrease buyback cost just a quick thing here end game it now costs three thousand as opposed to four thousand to buy your enemies back and this is actually a big one for cash flow i always talk about the importance of cash flow what they are calling the death tax adjustment previously when you died you flew back in with 20 percent of your money so you had ten thousand dollars you're about to go get loadout you die now you only come back with two thousand you lose that loadout they actually split that to 50 50 so now you come back with 50 percent of your cash and you drop 50 percent of it so a little bit of increase in cash flow for you you keep a little bit more cash if you die we still of course want to be spending that cash some huge quality of life improvements this one is super cool you now have a full team 
HUD, heads up display, right? So now, not only do you see what each individual person on your team has, you also see the total cash as a squad. So right up here, you see that it's actually gonna tell you when you have enough for a loadout. No longer have to do math. You can see the total cash of your squad here, but notice that each player, you can now see, okay, do they have a UAV? Do they have a self-revive, gas mask? How many plates do they have? So you can now just be like so-and-so, player number two, drop plates because you know that they have five or eight in a satchel. So you see everything that your teammate actually has, which is a huge benefit, especially when trying to find certain things. And in terms of what pops up, gas mask, kill streak, self revive key cards, gulag entry and redeploy, those are for Caldera. Next up, improved footstep audio. Now I'm not gonna get my hopes up here. I just wanna see how it actually sounds in game. They said they changed it, which should really help with getting information about where people actually are. Understanding, are they to my left, to my right, above me, below me, who knows? We'll see how it actually plays out. Sometimes stuff in patch notes isn't always as good as we anticipate. So we'll see. Next up, another massive, great change for Rebirth. It now requires four hits with a pistol for you to actually go down. No more three hit melees. We've all been in that situation. Look, it was two, then they changed it to three, and yet we still felt like we couldn't fully kill people who were actually, you know, we're shooting at them, they're just hitting us and we go down. They recognized this. They said, you know what? You shouldn't be able to just go in with the attention of beating somebody down with a pistol. They changed that. And now we're going back to, you know, four hits. You should have the advantage there. Slide camera lock. They addressed it with horizontal camera locking. I'm currently in the boat that this doesn't necessarily fix the issue. This is when you slide around a corner and try to pull down and aim down a stairwell. And that camera locks for a second and you can't actually do it. They said horizontal camera locking. I've always had an issue with vertical camera locking, so we'll actually see what they do here. Another massive change here, incoming kill streak warning banner. We've all had the situation where you're going to shoot somebody and next thing you know, you see cluster strike on the screen and all of a sudden you can't see that person anymore. It's literally in the way. This changes that, it slides it a little bit lower. This way you can get the notification, but still understand where you're actually shooting. Then we go back to buyback player prioritization. Another great thing for Endgame. This is gonna prioritize and put people who are dead at the top of the buy station. This way, all you have to do is basically hit the first person back or something like that. You no longer have to worry about finding which player is actually dead which not a huge issue for rebirth but end game allows you to be a little bit quicker ghost perk adjustment so they actually now buffed the ghost perk they previously nerfed it they said that they over nerfed it so they brought it back a little bit now you have to move a little bit less to actually trigger that mini map ping so it's still gonna happen where if you're sitting in a corner and you're running ghost you're going to appear on that mini map but now you have to move a little bit less Spawn protection, they gave a little bit more spawn protection, and they're actually decreasing the health and the turret damage of armored trucks. Now, other adjustments. Let's start to get into weapon balancing here. Frag grenades, damage increase. Throwing knives, damage increase. Claymores, Proxmine, Semtex, all damage increase. Now, part of this is going to be what we're going to talk about in a second. Now, this is the biggest change that you have to be aware of. Biggest change, the health increase. We are now bumping our health from 250 to 300 they tried this on caldera they're now bringing it over to rebirth what does that mean it means you now have 150 health in your plates and you have 150 base health so if you have no plates now you have 150 health as opposed to 100 previously they're upping the total health that you have basically increasing that ttk a little bit we're gonna see how this plays out i think it's gonna be a good change but we'll have to see how it actually happens let me know what you think down in the comments below now they've made adjustments to ground loot as well in terms of you know changing the ground loot like they do every season and every mid-season now we go down to bug fixes just kind of one main thing that i want to highlight here xbox series consoles you now have a 120 hertz back a lot of this stuff is just little things that were going on throughout the game that they needed to fix Terms of weapon balancing, we got a brand new H4 Blixen SMG. We'll see how it actually fits into the meta as this next day or two unfolds. Weapon adjustments, massive, massive changes. Overarching theme of the weapon adjustments, Vanguard guns are getting buffed. Cold War and Modern Warfare guns are getting nerfed. AK-47, nerfed. AS-44, buffed. Assault Rifle Charlie here, which is the bar. I now think the bar is going to be one of the better ARs that you can run, kind of find its way into the meta here because of the increase in mag size. You now have an option with a 60 round mag as well as some options with 40. I think that's going to be a huge benefit here. And you increase the headshot damage multiplier. I think the bar could be now in the meta. We'll see. Cooper Carbine bullet velocity increase. I've had this in my top four for a while. That bullet velocity increase just gives you a little bit more range on it, which, as everybody says, is always the downside. We get a little bit more range. C58 nerfed. Amax nerfed. 
Farah, Nerf, Nikita, slight buff, nothing to be really concerned about here. Assault Rifle Bravo, which is the Itcher Burst, got a little bit of a buff here, seeing that headshot damage multiplier increase a little bit. We have the NZ41. Here's the other one that, right off the patch notes, I think could again make its way into the meta here because of what we're seeing. We're seeing damage range and bullet velocity increases, which gives you a little bit more range. Now, the biggest downside of the NZ41 has been the recoil, which we actually get an adjusted recoil pattern when used in fully automatic when you're just holding that trigger down so i think the bar and the nz could actually make their way into the metas vargo 52 we got a little bit of a buff here so we'll see how that plays into the current meta the volkswagen the volkster whatever you want to call it headshot damage multiplier increase this was already a great option especially that max strafe version but they actually decreased that ads movement speed a little bit so we're going to take away that max strafe but create a little bit more viability. Probably a really good sniper support right there. And the XM4 nerfed. XM4 was nerfed probably out of the meta now. In terms of marksman rifles, gonna see how they play into the meta here because they did get a pretty good max damage and minimum damage increase, giving them more of damage values. Sniper rifles, the HDR was nerfed, the Pellington was nerfed, the ZRG was nerfed, Sniper Rifle Charlie, which is the AX50, was nerfed. Obviously, we see the three-line rifle here, the Vanguard three-line rifle, got a pretty big buff here. You see a lot of stuff being increased. Sniper Rifle Alpha, Modern Warfare, Fair, the dragon off who cares move on rye tech damage increase but max damage range decrease so kind of like evening it out a little bit i don't think it's going to be viable and the sniper rifle charlie's the m82 so who cares type 99 it got a pretty big buff here we got the garenko got a decrease in bullet drop off here as well as some increase to bullet velocity and ads time and then we got the car 98 vanguard again we're seeing a little bit of a buff there so i think they're really trying to push those vanguard sniper rifles into the mix they nerf shotguns, so we're seeing a damage decrease of 20% to the Street Sweeper Gallo, Jack 12, Origin 12, R9, and the Gracie Auto. Combat shotgun, not really a huge change there, although we did increase the bullet velocity as well as the damage range. Here's another big one, submachine guns. That long range mulatto got a pretty big nerf here, so that's no longer going to be a viable option. The Lapa got a nerf here. The OTS-9 got nerfed. The Armagera, slight reduction to initial recoil, making it a little bit easier to, to control, so that got a nice little buff there, as well as visual recoil decreased and damage penalty decreased for some of those mags. Owen Gun nerfed into Oblivion, no longer going to be a viable option. I'm pretty sure based on these patch notes right here, I mean, upper extremities damage major nerf there we've got lower extremities nerf there max damage range decrease mid damage range de decrease so a lot of stuff there fire rates decrease so i don't think the owen gun's going to be a great option anymore submachine gun alpha here which is your aug got a little bit of a nerf there well gun added frangible perk and the gaiwan short fire rate decrease so going to pull the well gun back a little bit and the ugr increased to 40 the magazine capacity now what didn't get touched the MP40 didn't get touched, so I'm going to be rocking with the MP40 at least moving forward. Other thing to note, not really anything. Roskin, 70% adjustment, so you're now going to be able to see Roskins a little bit better. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Subscribe down below for more Rebirth updates. Let's get better today, and I will see you tomorrow.